and the Gators have struck again. This time getting a running back transfer from Louisiana Lafayette, Billy Napier's former school. And that running back is Montrell Johnson, freshman from New Orleans, Louisiana. Johnson's 5'11", 210 pounds, as listed by the Louisiana, Louisiana Lafayette school page, which is another good-sized running back to pair with the other running back commitment we received on Saturday, and Trevor Etienne, another Louisiana native, and you'll likely see a good bit of that here over the next few years at least, while Napier keeps his connections in Louisiana, and Jabbar Jaluk, the running back coach, keeps his strong connections in Louisiana as well. Now, Montrell Johnson was the leading rusher for Louisiana, Louisiana Lafayette as a true freshman. Now, I understand that it's not SEC. It makes sense. You know, it's a good, it's, it's a valid argument. You know, why didn't, why wasn't he at a bigger school? But what we're about to do right now is check out his highlight tape. Uh, what I have pulled up right now is his huddle highlight tape. And then after that, we'll check out a quick YouTube clip of him having a big run this past season at Louisiana Lafayette. And if you guys tune in uh, to the highlights, I think you'll kind of kind of understand why we took him. He definitely belongs at a bigger school than Louisiana Lafayette, and I think his little uh, his, his ties there from Louisiana kept him a little closer to home. Uh, he's an extremely impressive physical and athletic running back he pretty much does everything you want so let's go ahead and dive into his highlight tape high school highlight tape this is the first half of his senior season then we will look at his one big play on youtube and then we will get into his gator raider and his potential impact on the florida gators roster in 2022 and beyond here is the huddle video now wants to play for me thank you okay here we go out of the shotgun he's gonna hit a hole cut back to the right and just outrun everybody and you'll see him do that a few times despite being 210 pounds he's got some nice long range speed which you don't typically get with a 210 pound running back normally they're more of the bruising running backs but he's got some nice home run speed you'll see it again here Good running styles, too. He picks his, picks his legs up, keeps his knees running forward, kind of leans forward with his body, gets his core activated. He's not a heavy leg runner, which is always a good thing. Normally it means you can maintain your speed a little better. More of a track style running. There he goes again. Another big play. And this is 3A ball in Louisiana in the middle of New Orleans. I believe there's five classifications in Louisiana, so he's in the middle, but... The fact he's in New Orleans kind of tells you that his competition level is not going to be too bad in high school. Now, he's bigger than a lot of these kids for sure. Uh, that team looks pretty tiny relative to the other other few clips. But as we can see here again, he, he gets in and out of his, his cuts really quick. As you see, he kind of faked inside, then bounced it right back out and in the blink of an eye and maintained his speed. Another big run. He's a big play waiting to happen. But most importantly, he's going to give Florida... Oh, that was a good, really good throw. Good catch. Most importantly, he's going to give Florida something they really don't have on their roster, and that is a physical, you know, larger running back at 210 pounds. Most of our guys that we currently have are home run hitters. And you'll see him jump over kids a lot, too, like he did right there. He's... He gets up off the ground pretty high. He dodges a lot of, you know, attempted knee tackles. He's got pretty solid vision. You saw he looked inside but decided really quick he wanted to bounce it outside. And if you paid attention to the Trevor Etienne highlights, bouncing it outside is typically a good thing in this Billy Napier scheme as he creates a lot of opportunities to use your athleticism to get outside you know despite the level of competition uh, in this scheme if you can get outside there's typically going to be only one or two guys out there which is why that scheme has been so successful under Mike Shanahan and and Kyle Shanahan and people like that it's going to be a similar system but as you can see Keith bouncing it outside lowers the shoulder shows his physicality 
He's doing everything you want to see in a highlight tape. And he's not playing single A or anything like that, so the competition isn't awful at all. Keeps his keeps his upper body pretty pretty intact. Uh, doesn't rotate his shoulders a lot when he runs. He picks his legs up, nice leg drive. He's got a really impressive sprinting stance, so that's awesome. There's a big old block. He's not scared. He is not scared of physicality. I like him a lot. Now, that there's nothing really of his freshman season as a whole up yet on YouTube. But uh, from a few clips that I saw prior, he is a physical running back at the next level as well. He's not all speed dependent. So let's go look at his big play. If I can get this to work. Oh, go away. All right, we got the X. There we go. Uh, we'll go to his YouTube real quick right here. Check it out. And then we'll get into the Gator Raider. But as you can see by the title, 99-yard touchdown run. And I'm sure if some of you are searching this on YouTube, you've probably already seen this. But for those that aren't, let's check it out. Good read. Bounces it outside. Switches the ball to the outside hand. And just outruns two guys by a lot. I mean, three almost caught back up to him, but the fact that he caught him on that corner like that and just outran him, that was impressive. We're not going to watch the extra point. Sorry to all you kicker connoisseurs out there. I'm sure he made it, though. Okay, well, if you tuned in right there and you're still with me, let's go check into the Gatorator, but we'll review his highlight tape a little bit again. 5'11", 210 pounds, uh, and just watching that clip, you can see he's well built, he's physical, which is expected with that size, but what's not as expected is his, his home run threat ability. He's not slow. You know, no matter what, no matter what anybody might want you to believe, he is far from slow. You can see he had, what, four or five huge runs on those highlight tapes along with the college highlight. So he's going to be a threat, and Billy Napier is not taking his commitment for no reason. He, he's not. You don't see all these kids from Louisiana Lafayette transferring into Florida currently. He's only getting the best of the best that he coached, and he knows can play at the SEC level, and this is one of those kids without a doubt. So here we will look at his impact on the running back room. If you remember from the last video, we were in orange on our projected score 22 right here down column BC we were in orange now we are up to kind of a yellowish green kind of tint which is where we're getting a, a lot better you can see it right there sorry I see it. yeah so so right here you can see it uh, these are how I do my scores which you'll see whenever we get to the big board or the Gatorator big board uh, if you you want to be at a 10, uh, even though this is the inverse, but you want to be green. Just ignore that for now. You want to be in the green. And you see it gets light green and yellow, and he's likely somewhere between this yellow and this green, which is a good thing. Well, not him. The running back room is between there, which Montrell Johnson played a big part of, and obviously Tre uh, Trevor Etienne played a big part of as well. So two massive additions to the running back room which was arguably one of the toughest looking uh, position group rooms that we had on our roster. So Billy Napier is already coming in and fixing things that, that he knows and that everybody knows needs to be fixed. And the running back room is now seemingly in good hands, pending any transfers. And we'll go look at the roster right now and see if that's a possibility. So we did this on the Trevor Etienne video, so if you've already seen this, we'll go through it really quick. But again, Damian Pierce, Malik Davis out. That left us with three running backs on our roster. Uh, Trevor Etienne's not included yet because we have not come out with the 2022 roster. And as you can see, we have Demarcus Bowman at first on the depth chart. And frankly speaking, guys, I know we all like the stars. I don't think it's a lock anymore. I think Montrell Johnson and his familiarity with the system, his familiarity with Billy Napier and Jabbar Jaluk, 
And the fact that he led the team in rushing last year, he's going to be a threat to DeMarcus Bowman's starting job. And it doesn't really matter. If you paid attention at all, you know that, that Napier likes using three running backs, two primarily, uh, and if the third one's good enough, he'll use the third uh, almost as much as well. So uh, there's room for all of these guys to contribute in here. Uh, Naquan Wright, currently listed at second, had the injury. Don't know exactly what he's going to be doing. Uh, had the weird post on Twitter where he posted the peace sign, so who knows what that means. I mean... You know, we like to overreact to everything these kids put on Twitter when not a, their entire lives is re- revolved around football, so we have no clue what he was talking about. Uh, and then third string, Lorenzo Lingard. And I think, not knowing anything about the situation, this is the most likely transfer with this news of Montreal Johnson. I'm not saying he's going to transfer. I'm not saying he's even guaranteed to not be the starter. It's possible. He has a wide range of outcomes. But uh, just judging from him being a redshirt junior and never really seeing the field and Napier bringing in a guy from his old school, this is definitely the most likely transfer candidate to me. Hopefully I'm wrong. Hopefully he's good. We'll see. Let's go look at our big board now for all our commitments. Again, I'm not going to dive too much into what it is. Just go look at the older videos I've already made. You can see a description but we're going to look here. These are all our current commitments, including our transfers. You can see on the 247 composite, the red is 247's transfer rating, which is where they re-rank the kids that are transferring in the transfer portal. And they actually gave Montreal Johnson a .9, which is a four-star. So he took a massive upgrade. You can see up there that he was a... 0.8572, so number 910 in the nation. So he took a huge jump after that freshman season. And he was a lot smaller in high school, too, if those heights and weights are correct. I doubt that was right. That had to have been from a sophomore or junior season, which is would explain the ranking. He probably didn't get too much exposure his senior year. But 5'11", 210, that's a whole different ball game. So he's technically a four-star. That's how we need to view him. And talent level, I rated him off of that. So he got a seven for being a four-star. Interest level actually needs to be changed. I didn't even update it. Oh, look at that. I was wondering why he was lower. I figured he should be higher. So let's sort it. And boom, he moves up to our fourth rated commit, jumping the guy who was most recently fourth in Trevor Etienne. So, according to the Gator Raider, and I'm not saying it's not an exact science or anything, but this is a bigger get than Trevor Etienne. Not trying to compare or compete between the two. They're both great gets and massive victories. But Montreal Johnson gets the .1 edge over Trevor Etienne at a 7.9. And I might be driving that, as we remember in our impact scores here. This is mainly done by me where I kind of come in here and get a feel for how they're going to affect the team going forward and what kind of impact they're going to make and what kind of impact it makes overall in the recruiting landscape and the college football world. And I gave him a nine. I think this guy's going to play next year. I think he's going to play a lot, and I think he's going to be good. So as you can see, the only other people over a nine or at a nine are Shamar James, Kamari Wilson, and Trey Smack who I think is the starting kicker next season. So that's only four guys that are above a nine, and he's one of them. Again, final score is a 7.9. We, you know, Perfect score would be 10, but there's almost nobody that's going to get a 10 unless a kid's from Gainesville at a position of need, and he's a five-star, and he's going to play right away. That's what a 10 is, so... Anything above a 7 is actually pretty dang good. So he's a 7.9. Solid score. So again, Montreal Johnson comes in as our fourth rated current commitment for 2022. Another big recruiting victory for Billy Napier, Jabbar Jaluk. Great job, guys. Instant impact type of running back. And I think we will see a lot of him next year. And if you like this video, please like, 
please subscribe if possible. It uh, helps me out. It gives me a little more reason to keep pumping these videos out. And even though I enjoy doing them, it's not the only reason I'm doing it. But uh, I do I do enjoy the fact that I know people are enjoying the videos. So thank you for tuning in. Look forward to the next video as we got a big recruiting weekend coming up. And go Gators!